Today, I actually want to talk to you guys about a about a pressing issue that I think is uh, not getting better. It's actually getting worse. I've been checking that out over the last like 10 years that we've been running a treatment center. You know, in the in the first couple of years, we you know we were doing things kind of just off the bat and and uh, just getting a place up and going. And soon came to realize that there were all kinds of laws in place that required you to register as a treatment center and in order to do that you would need to undergo or or check off a pretty stringent list of criteria and just to give you an idea my registration here at, at ezekiel house took close on two and a half years just to to complete you know in the beginning i was also i was one of those guys that was like yeah i know but but this and but that and you know why must we register and we're trying to do a good thing and 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 uh, you know was kind of put in a in a position where i had to read the documentation i had to read the law you know if you if you want to check it out that law is act 70 of 2008 a promulgated law it's not something that's like it's not like you decide whether you want to you know be part of this or not it's if you want to run a treatment center you need to do things legit you need to do things according to the law and according to the minimum norms and standards of the Department of Social Development. That's just the way it goes. What I've noticed and what the, the issues that I actually want to talk to you about is that there are these things that I like to refer to as popcorn centers, you know? They just pop up everywhere. They, they start treatment centers that charge people money um, and have usually have them in some remote location somewhere. Um, that advertise and advocate the treatment of, of drug and alcohol abuse and just unregistered. And the sad part is, is that if I, you know, I don't want to tell you the number of centers, but there are, there are a lot of them. And of that massive number of center, centers, you can count on two hands how many of them are actually registered as treatment centers. Now, this is a bad thing for you as a parent um, because what you're going to do is you're going to go onto the interwebs and you're going to go and look for a place to put your kid in that's going to help them with a pretty serious problem. Um, you know, you're going, to, you're going to look and it's all going to look fantastic on the internet. You're going to have fantastic websites and everybody's advocating the greatest things. And uh, the problem is, is that none of those things, most of the time, none of those things are actually there. I mean, to run a decent treatment center, you need qualified staff. You need, you know, proper counseling programs. You need proper center management programs. You need proper educational tools. You need, you know, there's a list of pretty stringent, you know, uh, criteria to be able to do these things properly and to be able to help someone actually overcome their, their problems. I mean, lately there's been all kinds of newspaper articles about about uh, what's happening in these treatment centers and people are saying that it's not like that you know that they, they're defending themselves saying ah oh, it's not like that it's smear campaigns meanwhile it's exactly like that that's exactly what happens in these treatment centers people get put into solitary confinement people get handcuffed people get beaten people get hurt you know people have got issues you know people need help people need to be to be treated on more levels than just spiritually you know, people have got psychological issues. People have got social issues. People have been through traumatic experiences. You know, people have done some heavy things that they need to, to deal with and, and get help with. And unfortunately, <laughs> these treatment centers aren't doing that. What I'm trying to do is, is I'm trying to make it extremely clear that if you are looking for a treatment center, your number one question should be, are you registered with the Department of Social Development? If the answer is no, you move on. The norms and standards make a lot of provision for doing things right. Um, I've come to learn this over the years. It's a great accountability structure. It's not there to keep you under a finger. It's not there to do anything uh, that's going to be neg negative to your program structure. It's actually there to keep you accountable, to make sure that the people that go into treatment actually get the help they need. 
following this process has only made Ezekiel House a better place. It hasn't made it worse. It hasn't, it hasn't limited it in any way. It's actually made it better. And it's made a relationship with people in positions of authority in the Department of Social Development, in the government, in the local municipalities. It's made them part of a part of a structure and they can help. But guys just tend to try and steer away from this. And, and this is the heaviest thing, is that everybody in these treatment centers are looking for the loophole. They're looking for a reason why they shouldn't register. You know, and that's the wrong attitude to have. Um, and, the, and the heavy part about this is that all these other treatment centers that do all these things so dodgy and around corners and don't want to register and don't want to like, commit to actually doing things right and having the right staff are making everyone else look bad. You know, there's the stigma that gets put onto long-term treatment specifically, and even worse, onto faith-based treatment centers. Um, you know, there are some of us that are actually trying to do this thing right, that are actually like making an effort to, to help and change other people's lives, to get people reintegrated, to get them the help that they need, to put them in the support groups that they need to be in. Do yourself a favor and do your homework right, okay? Number one question, are you registered with the Department of Social Development? Okay, that's your first question. The second question is, are there capable staff at this treatment center that can help my child with whatever issues they do come up with? Um, are there decent reintegration programs for, for, for my child when they finish treatment? I mean, what happens? They go to rehab, it's great. What happens afterwards? Is, is that there? On that note, there's, these, there's this fantastic thing that's now started called the Sober House. In my opinion, it's the worst possible thing you can do is put a bunch of recovering addicts in one house together, especially if they all come from different treatment centers and have been there for different periods of time. I mean, think about it logically. What's it going to help putting a guy in a, in a house with another guy? The one guy has been in rehab for three weeks. The other guy's been in rehab for nine months. I mean, it's what do you think is going to happen? You know, when, when, when these guys relapse, everybody throws their hands up in the air and they're like, oh no, oh no, it's all happened again. Of course it's happened again. This is what I've seen over 10 years, okay? This is what I've seen happen over and over and over and over and over again. And it's heartbreaking. And the heaviest part is, is that no one's actually like trying to get rid of these other centers or, or, or get these guys to actually like become accountable. As it's just, they just get more and more and more. I mean, every time I open the internet, there's some other treatment center that's now started. You know, there's some other sober house that's now started, or there's some other halfway house that's now started, you know, and it's, it's a heavy dodgy. And these are the very people that sit in office with kids that need to go into treatment telling them, no, don't go there, don't go there to that treatment center. Come to our treatment center because we know what we do. You know, I'm no saint. I'm not saying that I run some fantastic treatment center and everybody should come to me. On the contrary, I find out as much information I can about someone that's in substance abuse and the issues relating to that specific case as I can. And if that person does not fit the criteria to be in the center, I feel that I cannot help that person in the center, then I refer them to a place that can. If you're a parent that wants to put your child in rehab, read the act. Read the minimum norms and standards. Ask the right questions. What are the right questions? Again, are you registered with the Department of Social Development? Have you had an inspection? Do you have a registration number? Can I have that registration number? Double check that registration number with the Department of Social Development. Okay. Um, find out whether the staff are there? What staff are there? Are there psychologists there? Are there social workers there? Are there nursing staff there? Are there uh, psychiatrists there? Are there addictions counselors there? Are there trauma counselors there? Find out. What is the program structure? Ask people, what is your daily program structure? Tell me about the day. What happens when my child wakes up in the morning to when my child goes to sleep at night? That's what you need to know. You need to know what the basis of the counseling structures are. Okay, how is this going to help my child? These are questions you shouldn't be afraid to ask. No one is doing you a favor by helping your child. You are paying for a service. The last thing you want to do is put someone into a treatment center for a year. It's going to cost you 70 or 80,000 Rand. And when that child walks out of there, he hasn't dealt with any trauma. He hasn't dealt with any issues. He hasn't accepted any major like problems that he might or she might have dealt with in her life or had to have dealt with in her life or dealt with the consequences of their substance abuse properly.
okay? And then put them into a halfway house with people you have no idea who they are, with residents there that you have no idea where they come from or what programs they've been on. When relapse happens, are you really surprised? I'm not. I'm tired of all these centers popping up everywhere. I'm tired of all these people claiming to be treatment centers. I'm tired of watching people being taken advantage of by these people that run these non-legit treatment centers. I'm tired. Having an NPO number does not make you a treatment center. Okay? Having a certificate from a grading council does not make you a treatment center. A registration certificate from the Department of Social Development after having, co having complied with the, with the minimum norms and standards of the Department of Social Development, having complied with Act 70 of 2008, having, having had all the inspections done, okay, having received the certificate of registration from the Department of Social Development, and actually having the structures in place and making sure that people are getting the help they need. That is what makes your treatment safe. Other than that, you are, you are compounding and perpetuating the drug problem in our country. And you need to stop doing that. And as a parent, don't look at what something costs. Look at the help that someone's going to give your child. So please, do yourselves the favor. Do the homework before you put your child into treatment. Closing these centers down is going to be a next to impossible task. So what I'm asking is, is that if parents do the right homework and not send their children to these centers, they will have no option but to close down. Thanks for your time. Please consider what I've said here and enjoy your day further.